Hi guys, and welcome back to another week of Temporary Insanity, brought to you by the Circus Freak Show that is before the 90 days. I wonder what this pattern is. He looks like an alien with a smile. So let's just dive right into the mess, right? But actually wait, before we do that, I'd like to address something to TLC. TLC, I know you're not watching this, but in my pretend mind, some intern is. Here's my question. What barnacle bucket did you scrape this cast from? I mean, seriously, we have the chicken lady. I'm a chicken lady! <laughs> Kardashian's third cousin, twice removed. Big pimpin' over here with hose in every Brazilian area code. And the human equivalent of vomit. Come on, TLC, like this is, it's getting to be too much for us, really. Anyway, I'm done with my rant. Let's just dive into this burning dumpster fire, shall we? So we're going to start off with Renee. And apparently, in my last video, I was calling her Rainy. No, she's Renee. Anyway, Renee, she's awake and she's sweeping the floor, reflecting on why Chitty didn't sleep with her the night before. And she thinks it's because, you know, he hasn't really been with a woman since his accident. And maybe it's because... I mean, I am a lot of woman. Maybe I'm just too much to handle. Too much of a woman is an understatement here. Uh, girl, you're a lot. I mean, they both are, really. Because as we've all heard, these two have been breaking their NDA and spilling the tea that no one asked for. They've been posting text messages of what they actually allegedly said. Chitty's side of the story is that he had told Renee that he was celibate before she arrived in Africa and that she apparently got super mad about it, but came anyways. But as we know from what we've watched in this episode, that might not be true. I have yet to have the courage to tell Renee about my vow. In fact, it's not true, but we'll get into that later. And Renee here is saying that Chitty sent some really racy text messages for someone that's celibate. Like saying that he's gonna uh, slowly place his hot dog in her bun. I know, it's too much information, really. It really is. And then Chitty says that apparently Rainy, Renee, was summoning the demons, among other things. It's really a mess. And I don't think we, and do we really care? No, we don't. We don't. Like, keep your crap to yourselves, guys. We're just here for the show. All right? So anyways, let's get back to the scene, right? So Chitty, Chitty's sister, and Renee head out to the market. In here? Yeah, we're going to buy some things. And in the market, they get to the area where the caged chickens are. Hey. Hey, Angel. And I don't know if this idiot thought that this was a petting zoo in the market. Like, why would you have cages in a market? Anyway. What are you trying to buy for? Hey, what are you trying to get for? What the fuck do you think they're doing, Renee? And once finally Ding Dong here puts two and two together of why the hell they sell chickens in a market, she lost her freaking shit. Then I realized what she was doing, really trying to buy a live bird right in front of me and eat it. Because to her, chickens are family members. Remember, she has like a thousand of them back home. So she continues to freak out about this whole situation, basically being extremely rude to everyone around her. But you know, it's Renee and crazy is as crazy does. So they leave the chicken part of the market and she's still spiraling and Chitty's sister asks her, Hey, you know, do you eat chicken? I know you love chickens, but do you eat them? Oh, yeah. Like, what in the hell? And Chitty's sister asks a very reasonable question, like, how do you eat chicken without killing it? I know why you get it from the market. Hey, moron. Regardless, if you get the chickens from the rotisserie section at the Piggly Wiggly, or the KFC, or if they're lathered in buffalo sauce, they still go through the same pain and suffering as the ones from the market in Nigeria. In fact, they might deal with less trauma in the market in Nigeria than the ones here in the States. I mean, I don't know. I'm maybe. I check in because I felt so bad for the situation. When the guy got him out, he just like, by the legs, no remorse. Like, I'm like, if I just saw like some emotion or thought like, goodbye, little buddy. Like TLC, again, where do you get these people? This person has so many screws loose. I mean, I could understand if Renee was a vegetarian or a vegan and she just, you know, started acting this way. I'm let that so chicken crazy. live. In such a crazy manner. But no, she goes through the Chick-fil-A drive through like the rest of us. So later on, Chitty and Renee go off to the side. And you know, at this point, she's calmed down. She's petting the street chickens as if they were little dogs. And Chitty's sister pops in and brings them some corn snacks. Hey, lady, weren't you the one that was afraid of getting assworms? 
and here you are touching a bird, not purelling your hands, and then eating a corn on the cob that needs both of your two hands to be eaten. Ugh, I can't with this one. So Chitty and Renee are sitting there chatting it up, and Chitty finally tells her that they're not going to be doing the deed, you know, the horizontal mambo. I will not be having sex with you until we get married. And she's not happy about this. This is the first time she's heard this. Again, remember, going back to what Chitty said, he said, he lied and he said that he told Renee before she got to Nigeria, which is totally not the case. Now all of a sudden you're telling me your little celibacy story? But you know, whatever, we're gonna leave these two for now. So I need to take a minute because my dog Mango wants to tell you to like and subscribe. All right, let's get back to the show. So now let's get into this fake ass couple that is Tiger Lily and Adnan. And one viewer commented in the comments about the fact that, that this is some fakery, that they would not be getting married at night. And not just that, but she wouldn't be able to get married the day that she got there. Like, there's a lot of paperwork and a lot involved before you can actually say, I do, in Jordan. And let me tell you, if this is fake, then it's really messed up that Adnan roped his entire family to do this stupid-ass show. So Tiger Lily and Adnan go into the location that they're going to sign the marriage papers in what I presume is a mosque. But if it is a mosque, then wouldn't she have to wear a hijab out of respect or maybe this is the city council. I don't know. Anyway, they're signing their life away. I don't know anything about the Muslim marriage contract. Girl, first of all, and I believe I might be correct in this, it is the Islamic marriage contract, not the Muslim marriage contract. Please, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments because there is a possibility that I'm wrong. We did it, baby. We did it. We just got married. And yay for them, right? Mer. And I'm so excited to this moment all my life. And Nandan is getting ready for the you know what, because as we know, he still carries his V card, at least in this scene. And I guess he doesn't have his V card anymore because Tiger Lily probably took it in three minutes or less. So it's the next day and Adnan and Tiger Lily here are getting ready to meet Adnan's extended family. And apparently the hairstylist that she flew across the globe isn't there at the moment, you know, in the morning when you need to run a comb through your hair. And apparently the reason why is because she gave them the day off because the wedding is the next day and she wanted them to rest. Okay, sure, TLC. So because he's not there, she calls the spa at the hotel and asks for a hairstylist to come up. So the hotel hairstylist gets there and it's a dude. This is hairstylist? Yes. Why a guy? Why not woman? And again, I feel like this is some TLC Medlin. And here's my question. Would the St. Regis in an Islamic country like Jordan send up a male hairstylist? I think that they would know better than to uh, assume their clientele is going to be okay with a male hairstylist. I don't want any man to touch my wife. This is not respectful in my religion. And no shade to the hairstylist, but would the St. Regis send a hairstylist without like a nice shirt that said the company logo, you know, the hotel? And this outfit is fine and dandy for us normal folks. But I think that this hotel would have at least told this dude to tuck in his shirt. I mean, maybe I'm wrong here. I've never stayed at a swanky hotel like this. I can really only tell you what happens at the Ramada Inn. But, you know, I am assuming that this is probably a higher standard of presentation. So because this hairstylist is some random dude, Tiger Lily and Adnan have the dullest unclimactic argument. I don't want other man to touch you, baby. You are just for me. So at the end of this stupid argument, Anan is okay with the fact that this is a guy. Um, and this is just honestly such a fake storyline. So the hairstylist gets her ready in five minutes because that's the limit that Anan put on him to get her ready for this fake ass scene. So they're on their way to the family party. So they get to the party and everyone greets her very kindly. It seems like a really everyone seems very adorable and cute. And Adnan's brother asked Tiger Lily, like, hey, don't you love Jordan? Why don't you want to live here? And she's kind of like saying to us here, like, has this dude said anything to his family about him moving to America? Because the way that they're asking her questions, it really doesn't seem like it. Adnan's brother is unaware of our plans to live in the U.S. We're going to go on to some fresh new meat. And that is Sunny from Durban, South Africa. 
So Sonny is originally from Bangladesh, and he moved to South Africa to help his dad with a store that they have. When I finished my study, he invited me to come and do the business with him. This is a store. So Sonny has really made a place for himself there. He has a bestie. But you know, same old story. He can't find love there. So he downloaded an international dating site. And by the way, what is this international dating site that all these people download? I'm asking for a friend here. So he fell in love with a girl from Orlando named Vea B. Okay, I wrote it down, but I don't remember how she pronounces it. I'm sure I messed it up. So we're just going to call her Vea. And these two share, you know, similar issues of abandonment. And they feel that they've really connected because of this. You know, she's adopted and his dad left to open this store in South Africa, in Durban. Regardless of the twin flame aspect of their relationship, apparently they're not shooting sunshine and rainbows out of their asses because sometimes she ignores his phone calls and ghosts him. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I can't trust her. And also she has an ex-boyfriend that is a BFF. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about Vea for a minute. So she's a self-proclaimed anxious person. And we're here in the scene and she's hanging out with her friends. And she tells her friends that she's anxious about her trip. And I'm like nervous about my phone working. And because of that, she's inviting her ex, the ex-bestie. Yes to meet her new boyfriend. Yes. I mean, would it be my first choice to bring your ex? What does she think is gonna happen here, huh? I'm sorry, that's selfish. You're literally sitting here with two girlfriends. You could have dragged either of these two over there. I'm sure one of them would have wanted to go. But no, you're dragging your ex. So apparently, once Rory the ex found out about Sunny, Rory went to Sunny's Facebook page and like a 13-year-old, wrote ha-ha on Sonny's page. Actually, I'm not sure if it, he actually literally wrote ha-ha. It could have been ha-ha or the emoji laughter ha-ha. Anyway, still stupid, right? And then it came up, who is this guy and why is he ha ha my pictures? This is the person that she's bringing to meet her new boyfriend. Could this be another fake storyline or are people just that stupid? So another whopper in this dumbass story is that she hasn't told Sonny that Rory is coming with her. And she's apparently not going to tell him until she gets there. So it's going to be a big old surprise. A big old nasty surprise. Bringing my ex to South Africa. I mean, it could f- up my whole relationship. And that's when Sunny needs to say, bye Felicia. Get back on the plane. Anyways, we're moving on. To Faith. And trash bag POS garbage pile Lauren. Who allegedly might be trying to run off to the Philippines to avoid paying child support. Allegedly. So they're in the taxi. She's showing him the sights and pointing out the landmarks. And, you know, it's cute and adorable. And they finally get to her hotel. Fresh from the U.S. And, you know, she's so proud of her new boyfriend. And that breaks my heart. But, you know, a lot of us have been there, right? When you're so excited to present your new man or your new girl to later find out that he cheated on you and is a poor example of a decent human being. Anywho, so he gets his own room because Faith wants to wait before they get intimate. I want to wait until Lauren and I really trust each other before we have sex. And I appreciate that she's setting her boundaries with that because she could have easily been, you know, I want to please this man to keep him and do whatever he wants. But no, she's like, this is how it's going to be until I'm comfortable and hands him his room key. So that night they go out to eat and Faith, you know, tells us that even though she's in her 30s, that this is the first man that she's really been on a date with. And, you know, she tells us that a lot of men tell her that they love her. Once they find out that she's trans, they're like, peace out. Oh, you're a lady boy. You look like a woman, but I don't like lady boy. And then Garbage Pile Lauren says, you know, well, I like you for you. I like you. Yeah, the whole thing. And the expression on her face looked like she was falling deep for him, you know, and she was falling hard. Because, you know, finally someone's telling her that she's accepted the way she is and she'll be loved the way she is. And that is a really lovely thing to say if he were a genuine human being. So during the dinner, Moron here hands her his stupid girlfriend test that he gives to his potential love victims. It's basically like 40 stupid ass questions. And, you know, 
Faith, she's like reading them and she's kind of like, oh my God, this is so stupid. I love her responses. Yeah, name that's a, a very place bad you don't question. want to go. Hell, <laughs> never mind. Just skip it up and back to you. Yeah. And she said that the questions were grade school and weird, which, yes, they were. And that says a lot about the author, doesn't it? Faith reiterates to him that she wants to take it slow. It's her first boyfriend, and she doesn't want to end up with a broken heart. And he reassures her that, you know, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Bullshit, bullshit. And then he basically kind of threatens her, like, you got 20 days to figure it out. Yeah, 20 days, uh, not enough, but let's figure it out. And of course, to us, he tells us that he needs to develop this relationship quickly because if not, it's going to mess up with his plans of staying there. So yeah, so he's basically using her to stay in the Philippines. And his plan's probably to mooch off her and live off her and avoid whatever he's avoiding in the States and live happily ever after in his gross-ass reality. But that's not going to be the case because Faith knows better. He's not going to let anyone just walk all over her like he plans to. So now we're going to go to Ingrid and Brian. So before we start with them, I need to point out my last recap. I mentioned that he was wheelchair-bound. And that's actually the incorrect way of describing someone in a wheelchair. According to this disability terminology chart that I found, instead of using wheelchair bound, which is wrong and offensive, um, you can say a person uses a wheelchair or is a wheelchair user. So back to these two. So rumor has it that this dude was married when he met Ingrid. She did go into it with full knowledge that, you know, he was separated and he was trying to get a divorce. Then, okay. I can see how that can be, you know, excusable. This whole cast is very dirty, really. Like, this is a, this cast is a dirty old mess. That's all I can say. So let's forget all of that for a minute and talk about their story. So Brian is showing Ingrid how to install the driving bars that he needs to press the brakes and to make the car go. And I really love this girl's attitude. She seems to be committed to the moment. No. No. Ingrid Mechanic. Mechanic? And just seems happy to help. Like, she doesn't seem to have any reservations about it, which is great. We're off to a good start here. So they get to the hotel room where they are greeted by a pack of Pringles and two heart-shaped pillows that look more like your livers after a night out of heavy drinking. Uh, so for some reason, I lost the audio for this scene. So I'm recording the audio at another time. So if it sounds a little bit weird, that's the reason why. So anyways, in this scene, uh, you know, Brian tells us that he took half of the blue pill just in case so. And the pill, you know, it's not for him physically, you know, to really be physically aroused. It's more for him to feel connected with the other person uh, and to feel wanted. For it. So they're getting ready for bed. And Brian thinks that Ingrid should know what she has to deal with with him in the wheelchair right off the bat. Uh, sometimes if I do meet somebody, maybe I'll throw him a little test sometimes and have him help. Which I don't think that's right. You know, don't test a person. Just show them little by little. Anyways, so, you know, he asks Ingrid for help to take off his pants, you know, to help him in the shower. This is all things that he can do, but, you know, he's making Ingrid do it right now when she's super tired after a very long day. And Ingrid is a little bit overwhelmed, you know, and rightfully so. Again, it's been a long day. This is like a new thing for her. You know, you got to be honest about this, right? And he at the end is like, yeah, I think I might have like thrown her a little bit too much. I think that the right approach would have been, you know, baby steps, you know, ease her into it. Just don't overwhelm her completely in the beginning. But anyways, that was his strategy, and I think his strategy sucked. But that's just me. So anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you very, very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe and all that jazz. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.